Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the last episode, we gained membership of the Gerudo tribe, and as such came to the Gerudo fortress. This episode, well, our first task, you will have actually seen up there just as we were loading into the game, was there is a skull toddler very much at the top of the fortress, which is only here at night, so let's head up and grab it. So we can actually see the skull toddler from here, and I guess you can kill it from here. But we need to get round to the side anyway, so I'm going to ignore it for now. Uh, can I make that jump normally? Yeah, I can. You don't need the hover boots for it. There are these vines here, which you can quickly grapple up. I mean, you can just climb up them, but grappling is much faster and therefore more fun. Um, what we actually want to do is come around here, because not only does this provide a nice way to access this, but there is a chest over there. There are two ways to get to it. As Navi is showing you, you can play the Scarecrow song and summon Pierre, but actually from here you can just grapple straight onto the chest, which is much faster. And the chest contains a piece of heart, so we've only got two more to get in the entire game, which is fantastic. Let's make it daytime. Then from here, so you'll notice there is a giant feature on the map, which looks like a weird pair of like dumbbells or like a electric scooter. What the hell's wrong? Do you mean the whole thing does kind of look a bit like an electric scooter or a mobility scooter or something? Anyway, if we head up here, well, there's one other thing we need. Weirdly enough, if we play a Pona's song, she can in fact join us here, despite the fact he says, with a, a, a clear lack of lack of opponent around. Well, you know, let's try that again. I can hear her. This is bloody confusing, isn't it? Oh, she peered down here. There we go. Can I take her up these stairs? I bet I fucking can't. Oh, they look way too steep for her. Fuck's sake. You can definitely get her up here, like, 100%, so... Ugh, I don't know why she's been so dodgy. Anyway, well, what we want to do, we do need a her eventually. Because usually, weirdly, you can summon her up here, despite the fact she can't walk up the stairs with you on, she can appear up here. But, we need to head up here, and we are going to need her once we're up here, but I guess you need to go up here and then summon her, which feels like a lot of a long way around. Navi, what do you want? You're going to say, oh, Doctor, you've been playing this for a while. Oh, no. The desert! That's where the evil Ganondorf the Evil King was born. If we go there, we might find something. That was actually more useful than the shit she normally comes out with, so, you know, I'll go for that. This is an area, by the way, that time doesn't pass, because the Sun Song warps you back to where, wherever you entered, so you can actually... Daytime will last forever here, which is important, because what we're about to do here you can only do during the daytime. Let's actually try and summon a opponent this time. She, but that's not where she was! This is bullshit. Anyway, um, you will notice there is a woman here, you have to talk to her from horseback, and she will say... Hey, newcomer, you have a fine horse. I don't know where you stole it from, but... Okay, how about this horseback archery challenge? Once the horse starts galloping, shoot the targets with your arrows. Let's say how many points you can score, you get 20 arrows. If you can score a thousand points, I'll give you something good. So it costs 20 rupees, and we've got a ton of rupees, so I might as well use these. Important thing to note with this challenge. Opponent moves by yourself, herself. This is completely on rails. You don't have to control opponent, just focus on your shooting. You've got these jars here. Each one you shoot is worth 100 points. And a holy shit bags. Oh, that was way better than I thought. Then you've got these targets. If you, the closer you shoot to the center of the target, the higher your score will be. Uh, you can get 30 for the outside, 60 for the middle, and 100 for the middle. So we've already got the 1,000 we needed. Oh, this is actually really frustrating. I'll explain why this is frustrating in a second. Um, actually, maybe it won't be that frustrating. Yeah, that is going to be frustrating. <laughs> You'll see why. Fantastic, you are a true master. I'll give you this, keep improving yourself. So she gives us another piece of heart. One final one to get left in the game, which is pretty cool. If we mount a Pona and talk to her again... Oh, bugger me. Thank you, bugger me to stop. Hey, Rookie, looking good. Show me your skill again. You can always try to better your score. My personal best is 1,500 points. So you now need to beat her score of 1,500 points. If you beat that score on the first one, tough shit. You need to have got the piece of heart for this to count a second time, which is really annoying to have done it that first time. I bet you I'm not going to do it anywhere near as well last time, this time. I mean, it's a good start, actually, I'll be honest. Oh, cocks, I missed that one. That's pretty bad, because then A, I'll have to come back for it later, and B, um, you have only got limited arrows. Um, so I've got seven to get that. I should be okay, actually, because I need to, if I get... 
three bulls, five bullseyes here with seven arrows should be fine. So let's focus on getting those. Two, three, pots, and there we go. Oh, bugger. Actually, I need to cock that up there. 1590. So yeah, to do 1500, you have to be damn near perfect. You have to get all the jars and most of the, um, most of the bullseyes really do that. I'll be darned. You are the ultimate master. I'll give you an item suitable for the master. This quiver is very important to me. I want you to have it. Take care of it, okay? So that gets us the biggest quiver. Now you can carry even more arrows to a maximum of 50, which is wonderful. I really thought that was going to take much longer, as in I thought I'd have to cut there at all. I haven't done it just twice. I'm, I'm stunned at how straightforward that is. Maybe I'm better than this game than I thought, um, because that took me a long time when I was practicing this a while ago, and I've had like several glasses of gin since, well, I mean, since then, yes, but since I started recording tonight, and I started at the beginning of the Shadow Temple, so I really thought that might negatively impact my, my um, performance in the old horseback archery, but apparently not. Anyway, here is the gate out to the desert, but it's not open. In order to open it, we need to climb all the way to the top. And talk to the gatekeeper, and she says, Hey, rookie, are you going into the desert? I'll open this gate for you, but... You can't cross the desert unless you pass the two trials. The first trial is the River of Sand. You can't walk across this river. After you cross it, follow the flanks that were placed there. The second trial is the Phantom Guide. Those without eyes that can see the truth will only find themselves returning here. You're going anyway, aren't you? I won't stop you. Go ahead. So, if you're prepared for both those trials, on you go, into the Haunted Wasteland. And this sign will say a very similar thing. Haunted Wasteland, if you chase a mirage, the desert will swallow you. Only one path is true. And it's kind of like the Lost Woods, but more open-ended in terms of there is one path through it. If you stray from that path, it will just go, oh, sandstorm, and warp you back to exactly where we are now. So for now, flags are your friend here. If you move towards flags, you're all good. Here is the River of Sand. You'll notice, by the way, if you stop moving, you'll start sinking. There are two ways around that. Number one is keep moving. Number two is... Well, hmm, look at that. Um, I believe with this first one, you can actually technically grapple across it to either the crates or... Oh, bugger. Oh. You can either grapple to the crates or to the flags. The easiest way of doing this is, as I say, we start sinking unless we don't weigh anything. Slap the hover boots on. You will lose traction, but you won't sink in the sand either. And that means we can also cross the River of Sand easily. I think you can long shot across them, but hover boots is the most useful way of doing it. And I think I'm going to keep them on for this entire section just because then it means you don't sink into the quicksand at all. Next, you got to follow the flags. So I'll just do that. This reminds me of those really... It was one of my favorite sections of Breath of the Wild. Like, I've I've talked shit about Breath of the Wild on this because I think it has, I have big issues with it as a main series Zelda game. It basically, the fact that it didn't really have any plot, and the plot it did give was given you in cutscenes that took place 100 years ago. Um, but it had some really cool gameplay parts, of which one of which I really liked was the Lost Woods on it. Um, because that music that's in the Lost Woods, um, it's also in some of like, the Maze Island things, and it's this really creepy, like, blim, 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 that just really kind of, like, slightly freaked me out. Um, can you really slightly freak something out? I don't know. Um, but um, that was, that I, I thought that was a very cool section, and it was kind of like this, where you have, there's a specific path to go, and you had to figure out the way to do it, and one, I don't, actually don't know what's the way you're necessarily supposed to do it, but one of the ways I figured out the works is if you hold a torch, uh, by the way, Skull Toller in here. Uh, if you hold a torch, the way the flames from the torch blow guide you through it. And I thought that was really cool, that kind of creepy Lost Wood. It was a really cool take on the Lost Wood concept, which is what this is doing in its own way here. Definitely, like, Breath of the Wild had so many really good gameplay moments like that. Like, it had that, it had the islands, like, it had the first time you saw those fucking, like, dragons flying overhead and stuff like that. There's some really cool shit, but it was just... It felt like it wasn't... The, like, moment-to-moment -moment gameplay was good. The overarching, I felt, was what was it was missing. That it didn't have didn't have great music, didn't have a great plot. Um, but the actual gameplay was really good. So, issues with the Better of the Wild aside, I am cautiously optimistic for the sequel, because that may fix those problems. Only one with the Eye of Truth shall be guided to the Spirit Temple by an... In no, one with the Eye of Truth shall be guided to the Spirit Temple by an inviting ghost. Indeed, if we slap on the Lens of Truth... 
There's your inviting ghost. I'll be your guide on your way, but coming back I won't play. I'll show you the only way to go, so follow me and don't be slow. So I'm just, I've got magic coming out of my anus, so I'm just going to keep the uh, Eye of Truth on. I think technically I can take the hover boots off at this time. Um, yeah, you can, you can follow them fine without the hover boots here. There's no rivers of sand or anything. So yeah, I think, I think plot and music were the two things that really let that game down for me. I'm, I'm big on the music in Zelda games. Like, this is fantastic. I like music to be... It can set the scene, it can also be very present. I like the music that Breath of the Wild does have is very good, but it doesn't quite use it enough for me. Because um, like the Hyrule Castle music right at the end is fantastic in that the versions of Zora's Domain and Dragon Roost are really good. And like, I just don't like the fact there isn't any like Hyrule Field music. It's just kind of like ambience. It, it works with the feel of the game, but it's a bit near. Um, and also just too big for me. Um, partly just because I've just not got the time. Even with the portable portability of the Switch, not got the time for games that size anymore. That's not a problem with the game, that's a problem with, with me, quite frankly. Once you follow the spirit successfully, you get to the Desert Colossus. But yeah, my kind of my third issue with Breath of the Wild was kind of tied into the plot one is for me, what I quite like in Zelda are the villains. Zelda has very interesting, potentially villains. Zant is very cool. Wind Waker Ganondorf is very cool. Even Ganondorf in this, like, I like what he does and kind of what he is. And the fact of like, we haven't seen Ganondorf since we opened the Gate of Time, but we still know he's doing shit. We're undoing all the curse he did. We saw him in briefly like in the Forest Temple, and there's more interactions with him up and coming. The villain in Breath of the Wild, Calamity Ganon, was just a complete non-villain. It was just a menacing, undefined evil force that just sits there and waits for you to become strong enough to challenge it. It doesn't have a personality or anything like that. And again, from what very little we've seen... Spooky jars. From what very little we've seen of the um, sequel, it seems like it may go some way to addressing that. So, like I said, cautiously optimistic. Anyway, this is the Spirit Temple. But you'll notice, well, there's two armors here, um, but... <laughs> God, you can kill him his single big on sword. That's fantastic. But you'll notice there are two ways through here. There's a tiny little pathway that we can't fit through as a big fat adult. And there is a block here. And if we push this block out of the way, we actually can't because it's too heavy. So there's actually no way to proceed through the spirit temple for now. And indeed, we would learn this if we speak, speak to read these snaky things. This one says, if you want to proceed in the past, you should return here with the pure heart of a child. And the one on the other side says, if you should tra want to travel to the future, you should return here with the power of silver from the past. I mean, from those, it should be fairly obvious what we want to do, but if we head back outside... Past, present, future. The Master Sword is a ship through which you can sail upstream and downstream through Time's River. The port for that ship is the Temple of Time. To restore the Desert Colossus and enter the Spirit Temple, you must travel back through Time's flow. Listen to this, the Requiem of Spirit. This melody will lead a child back to the desert. I really like this piece, it's a very powerful one, like, when it's actually, oh fuck me, when it's actually played by um, the pair of them together, oh my god, I didn't even press Y there. Ugh. You have learned the Requiem of Spirit. Well, there was something in that cutscene we certainly haven't seen for a while. Um, but yes, um, 
So if you were to come to Geruda's Valley as a child, as we've already seen, there is you did your order just blocking the bridge and you can't get past them here so we've now got a way to come back here as a child and indeed that's what we need to do we need to do a fair bit of time warping now for the rest of the episode so let's indeed head back here as a child so here there's a few things we can do and i'm just going to continue basically talking about breath of the wild because i'm on a bit of a brain process oh by the way there's these levers here i don't think i've even um navied them yet so i may as well do that this is a lever. Watch its movements closely and let it go by. I'm sinking in the sand. That's not fair during a bloody cutscene. But yeah, they're, they still only take one hit. Even if you as a child just to discourage them. But keep moving and you should be fine. But yeah, like, I may have not thought Breath of the Wild is the perfect game. It has flaws, but it was still fun to play. And it's, I almost take solace from the fact that when it comes to main series Zelda games, Zelda, uh, Nintendo's basically never done the same thing twice. Um, and so I kind of take solace from the fact that even if I hated Breath of the Wild, and even if a lot of people said this is the best Zelda game or video game ever, full stop, bug, important, um, they still, even if though I didn't hugely like it, they're not going to do it exactly the same again because they've never done that. The closest they've done that with is this and Majora's Mask, but even so, they're hugely different games. So it's always nice to know that Nintendo are always going to use the main series of Zelda to kind of innovate in that way. Um, we've got a soft soil patch here, so I'm going to do the usual here of drop a bug in it and then also plant a seed in it. But it's just kind of... It's an interesting thing, like the plot is the thing that probably bugs me the most because it's a fun thing to do is watch back through the launch trailer, which kind of gives you what I felt was a fair idea of the plot of the game, Skulltola as ever. Um, but watch back through that if you've played Breath of the Wild fully as in completed the story. Um, well, you know, deeply the story, got all the memories and stuff like that. Play back through that and count how many scenes and voice acting sections in that are in flashbacks. It's actually the majority of the plot they show you in that, and the majority of the plot of the game happens in the past, which I just really don't like. It feels like you're being told rather than being, um, rather than experiencing it yourself. It's like everything's already happened and beyond your control. Anyway, we've planted that, so let's head back here as an adult. Yeah, maybe it was just my experience of that game, but I'd be very curious to see if anyone watching that trailer who's played a lot of that game watches that trailer and thinks, yeah, that's a pretty, that, that feels pretty close to what the plot is. I feel like the, the way it's shown in that trailer seems much better than it was in the game. Um, or perhaps it's just, well, no, I was going to say perhaps it's just the issue of it's a huge game. So it's like what plot you do get is spread out by like hours of gameplay, but that's not necessarily a thing so much of like some of the games I like that have like, Skulltoller up here from the bean. Um, some of the games that have some of the best plot, in my opinion, are like the Xenoblade games, for example, and they're like 100 hour RPGs. And the fact that the plot comes in, in between like sections of like four or five hours of grinding or whatever, obviously not necessarily required, but still a thing, that doesn't in any way diminish the plot. It feels like there is just very little plot. Yes, I am riding the bean again, you'll see why. Uh, there is just very little plot in Breath of the Wild other than like the flashbacks, but that feels like a very lazy way of doing it. That's the point you want to dismount, and you hop up here and get our final heart piece of the game. We have got all 36. You'll notice we are still missing one heart container because we still have another temple to go, the spirit temple, which is indeed dead ahead of us, and it's nearly time for us to enter it. We've just got a few more things to do. So there's that's a surprising amount to do, as I say, around um, the whole... Uh, Desert Oasis. So it's daytime, which is unfortunate. I was hoping I could do this all in night. So let's make it night again because there's a second skull dollar we need to get. Probably should have got this before grabbing the heartbeat. You can grab the heartbeat whenever. Fucking levers can fuck off. Um, they're just really irritating. They just constantly menace you. Um, ah, why? Why they fully layer all the irritating enemies? Anyway, since the levers are briefly dead. Oh, bugger! That is not what I expected to happen there. And I kind of forgot that you can grapple onto trees. Uh, what I wanted to do was kill this Skulltola. Get away from me. Um, kill this Skulltola. And then we've got another thing to do here. Has anyone noticed, by the way? I have, and I will freely admit this, I have already dropped a musical hint as to what our next, my next Let's Play is going to be, my next major one. Play the Song of Storms here. And this little side thing here. You fill the oasis and it reveals itself to be a fairy fountain. So I'm going to load up all my bottles. Um, but yes, I will say two things. I will say number one, I have already technically revealed it. 
It was a few episodes ago, and it was one musical track, and it's oh, technically not from the game I'm replaying, but from its sequel. But it's one of my favourite tracks from that franchise, so... But I would, the other thing I will say is it's not Cadence of Hyrule. Um, Cadence of Hyrule, for those who aren't familiar, is the um, Breath, of, Breath of the Wild. Legend of Zelda meets Crypt of the Necrodancer mashup thing, and I've been using a fair bit of the music from that just because that's like um, remixes of, of Zelda music, so it's been quite appropriate for this Let's Play, just how kind of like metal versions of what we're currently doing. Um, but no, even though I have been using a fair bit of that music, that's not the musical hint. The next Let's Play from me will not be Cadence of Hyrule. I've played Cadence of Hyrule. I really enjoyed it. It's a very good game. God fucking awful, I imagine, to commentate over. Having done, well, even co-op Let's Plays of Crypt of the Necrodancer, fuck me, that game is bloody fantastic, I will say. Crypt of the Necrodancer and Cadence of Hyrule are both amazing games. I love that mechanic and the whole way it works. I found a thing, by the way, so while I'm summoning the Great Fairy, I'm going to finish this story. Um... Like, that mechanic works fantastic, but boy is it not good to commentate over it. It's... V you have to be thinking so much about that game, it does not work particularly well as a Let's Play, and as such, I will not be doing it, I also don't know it well enough, and I think... I think it has so little going on in terms of... It's fun to play, but I don't know how much fun it is to watch, I'm not sure how well it would actually work as a Let's Play. So, you know, keep guessing for now. Um... Because we're getting to the end of this, only three, four episodes after this. Pointy Boob Fairy is back. And this is an... Well, you might be able to guess what this is based on things we've been given so far. Welcome, Doctor. I am the Great Fairy of Magic. I will give you a magic spell. Please take it. I hate what I do for their voices. It sounds so... For want of a better word, orgasmic. And I really don't like it, but I've kind of committed to this point. And it does fit with their characters of that... <laughs> and they're basically naked except for vines. Anyway... We got, indeed, Nairu's love. Nairu's love. I always call it Nairu with an R-Y, but it's Nairu. This game has been out for 20 plus years and I'd never noticed that. Huh. I'm an idiot. Anyway, cast this <coughs> Cast this to create a protective... Oh, this sentence does not want to be read. Protective powerful barrier. Powerful protective barrier. Either works. It's a defensive magic you can use with a button. Nairu's love is in effect only for a limited time, so use it carefully. When battle has made you blah 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 blah, we know how it goes from there. So that's kind of a useful one. It's like, because we got Din's fire, we got Nairu's, we got Pharaoh's, Ferora's wind. I always called it Pharaoh's wind when I was a kid, and therefore it's kind of stuck in my head as Pharaoh, not Ferora. Anyway, um, we're actually done for now. I've been doing a lot of gathering nonsense while bitching about various Zelda games at the Desert Colossus, but indeed we are done. Nairu's love, Nairu's love. For fuck's sake, I always call that Nariu and I call Feror a Pharaoh and it's just like, say both of them right. At least I can't get Din wrong. That's a nice easy name. Three syllables. No, three letters, one syllable. Um, so yes, next episode we are going to be entering the Spirit Temple properly as a child. Now we have all the necessary equipment to do so and all the little secrets and bonuses from around here. We're also doing fantastic for Skulltullers. We're on 93. We're basically done with the fuckers. Um, and indeed the last few Skulltullers are basically all in the Spirit Temple apart from one, which we can't get yet. So... I hope you join me next time for the beginning of the Spirit Temple. Thank you very much, and good day.